Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss one very interesting event-driven architecture pattern with AWS services, okay? So let us try to understand why we need this first, okay? That is on-prem to AWS. Why we need this, okay? So nowadays, many companies are moving their on-premise system to cloud. And obviously this migration, this change, cannot be done in one day right it is a long process and obviously some months or some years also it might take if there are a lot of jobs lot of architectures lot of pipelines present in on-premise to move them in cloud it takes some time so generally what happens in companies they split the whole migration process into multiple stages and at each stage they target one particular sector from their on-premise for migration purpose to cloud okay and suppose one particular company is in the migration process they have not completely moved all the components from on-premise to cloud currently some part of the pipelines are available in cloud and some part is basically sitting in on-premise okay maybe the source system sitting in on-premise but the ETL pipeline they have migrated to cloud okay maybe they are loading the data in some cloud warehouse that can be Redshift or Snowflake and then they have built some Tableau or ThoughtSpot or Power BI using these kind of data visualization tools, they might be generating some dashboards, okay? So now the problem in this kind of migration process is if, if your source is in on-premise system and rest of the complete processing engine is in cloud, that time generally what happens that every day at a particular time, all the inserted, updated or deleted records from on-premise go to cloud system that can be S3 or some other storage services, okay, kind of batch load. And from there, our compute engine take that particular new data and process that and put in final destination. That's how it works in batch process mode, okay. But there are some scenarios where this particular batch process may lead to ambiguity, okay. Like just think one kind of example where in legacy tech stack in on-premise system earlier some dashboard was built, okay, and which is related to business critical data, okay, that can be financial data or something like that, okay. Now suppose some change happens in the source, then in those dashboards which are directly connected to on-premise system, there it will be directly reflected, okay, but but whatever dashboards are pulling the business critical data from the cloud pipeline, there it will be reflecting after the dump of the data from on-premise to cloud as part of batch load, right? So that means what I mean to say in cloud dashboards, it will take some time to reflect the changed data or updated data, okay? And this kind of batch load might not be very safe in case of business critical data. As soon as some change happens in source system, then and then it should be getting reflected in the dashboard. That kind of uh, real-time update should be happening in case of business critical data. That time what we can do, okay? That's what this particular architecture gives the solution, okay? On-premise to AWS event-driven design. So what we can do, we can create this kind of architecture where we have producer in our on-premise system. Now, if some change happens, we have to bring those in an event-driven manner to our cloud compute resources, okay? So for that, to send the some data from on-premise producer to cloud, we can use API Gateway using HTTP API in a secured manner, maybe using API key or IAM-based authentication. You can send the producer data to API Gateway. You can call the API Gateway from producer and send the data, okay? And then, the Amazon Event Bridge here acting like the target for API Gateway. Basically, API Gateway will just take the data from the producer and put that data in Event Bridge. Okay. And now, this Event Bridge, in this Event Bridge, we can set up certain rules. Okay. That is, if this particular rule is followed, then publish that particular event to this SNS. Or else, if some other condition is followed, then publish to some other SNS. Like that, event bridge, what it is doing, it is basically publishing that information to SNS or simple notification surface, okay, in a particular SNS topic, okay. Suppose event bridge is not able to publish that event to SNS topic due to some reason, due to some failure or some error, then it will 
send that information to DLQ and from the DLQ you can configure a CloudWatch alarm or something to notify the admin team or developer team like that. Okay. So here what is happening based on event bridge rule the data is reaching to simple notification service top. Okay. Now from this SNS topic what will happen there can be multiple consumers. Okay. Here we have listed consumer 1 and consumer 2. So this is nothing but a fan out architecture right. You can have multiple consumers for this SNS topic and what the SNS topic will do it will basically broadcast that particular message to different different SQS queues. Okay. This is here consumer 1 SQS queue. This is here consumer 2 SQS queue like that. Okay. And from the SQS queue, the corresponding compute resource that can be Lambda, EC2, whatever. So here it is listed consumer 1 compute resources. Here it is com consumer 2 compute resources. They will be taking that particular event from the SQS queue. Okay. And process that. And eventually they will reflect that in Tableau or Thoughtspot, whatever the data visualization tool they are using. That way, as soon as some change happens in the producer side in on-premise system, because there is business critical data, this event-driven pipeline will make sure that is getting reflected in cloud as well. Okay. And some challenges you might face in this architecture, like just for example, if the producer is producing XML data, then generally that XML data sending to Amazon API Gateway becomes little bit difficult. That time what you can do in the producer itself, you can encode the data in base64 manner and producer can send that base64 encoded XML data to API Gateway and it is the responsibility of the corresponding compute resources to decode that base64 encoded data and get the actual XML data or message and process that okay. So that way using base64 encoding you can easily handle XML and all okay. And in each stage if anywhere the message is getting failed to process or something after certain retries it will be going to DLQ okay. So that we, we are making the whole system fail safe as well. As soon as some message go to DLQ you can make some notification pipeline to notify developer or admin team why the message failed at that particular instance they can investigate okay so this is one of the very popular event driven architecture pattern widely used in different industries okay i hope you have enjoyed this if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you are not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you